Hi, boys and girls. We're going to do a recap lesson. We're going to break down our lesson from yesterday, which is kind of more of an introduction to our upcoming mini lessons for reading. So we're going to break down asking questions, and I'm going to model in our book of the day today how we take time to think about and wonder things while we're reading. So our one of our book of the days today is Tara and Bella, the elephant and dog who became best friends. So just like in our videos that we watched and I modeled for you before stories start, we think of who, what, when, where, how, and why. We use the title in the picture. And we start asking questions to ourselves, and we tag or flag, okay, we track these thoughts with post-its. So post-its is our really big thing we'll be using in reading and writing all year. And if you don't have post-its, you could always create your own little slips of paper as well. Okay, so one thing I was wondering before the story even started is how did these two meet? And remember in our lessons, sometimes the questions we wonder get answered as we read on. Then other times some don't, and that's okay. So let's begin our story. So that was one wondering I had before the story started. Tara and Bella. The elephant and dog who became best friends. Text and photography by Carol Buckley. Meet Tara, the elephant, and Bella, the dog, who won her heart. These inseparable friends live freely together side by side at the elephant sanctuary in Tennessee. Whatever attracted an elephant and a dog to each other really remains a mystery. But one thing is for sure. Tara and Bella are truly forever friends. How they met and how an injury threatened to end their friendship is a touching true life story that shows us just how intelligent and loving these animals are. And so one thing I was wondering, they're talking about a sanctuary. And so to understand the story, we have to understand the word sanctuary. So it's kind of like a home, a rescue, um, a zoo, but not where people necessarily go to, where animals go to entertain us or just live. It's another place for them to live similar to a zoo, but also very different. Okay. And this one is in the United States. It's in Tennessee. Okay. And so my question, my wondering is, is there a sanctuary? Is the sanctuary still open? Because this book was written in the 90s, okay? So it was a little while ago. And could we visit? Now, remember, these wonderings, maybe we'll find out in the rest of the story. Maybe we won't. Maybe I'll Google it to find out the answer. Definitely not in the middle of the story. Let's move me out of the way. Before Tara met Bella, she was an entertainer. Tara performed in the circus as the world's only roller skating elephant. She was in the movie Annie and appeared on television shows like Little House on the Prairie. But after 20 years of entertaining, Tara deserved a different life. She needed elephant friends and lots of room to roam. So a couple things I was wondering while I was reading that is, did she have other animal friends? So even before going to the sanctuary and giving up her entertainment life, kind of like retiring, uh, did she have other animal friends or was it just people? So I kind of want to know a little bit of her life then. And 
My other wondering was, where did she live during those 20 years? And what she live in? A cage? You know, a building? A section of cement wall at someone's house? You know, we never know. I was wondering those. And maybe we'll find out. And maybe we won't. Look at all that open space they said that they wanted to give Bella and the other elephants. So this is in Tennessee. So in the spring of 1995, Tara became the first resident of the Elephant Sanctuary in Tennessee. The sanctuary is a special place with lots of room where elephants can live freely in nature, not like the zoo but like the wild, and there we go. So earlier I said, kind of like a zoo, but very different, and that's how. It's a very open and they get to roam in the same way they would out in the wild. So something I was wondering on this page was how many elephants live there at the sanctuary? And another one just came to mind with lots of room where elephants can live freely. So is this an elephants only sanctuary? Because I've heard of that where some rescues or sanctuaries take care of one particular species or kind of animal, or are there other animals? So are there other animals that also live at the sanctuary. So see boys and girls, as we read, the author can't tell us and teach us everything. So we have to read with a curious mind. And the title of our lesson yesterday was keeping our brain awake, keeping our brain engaged. And so constantly being curious and wondering things that the author hasn't shared helps our mind be engaged in the story, helps us to learn more and to remember and understand. But most importantly, helps us connect at a deeper level with this, with this story. When the new elephants arrived at the sanctuary, Tara would be there to greet them. She would lead them through the barns and pastures and show them her favorite creeks and forest trails. She even taught the animals how to pick wild blackberries. And so something I was wondering, or something I even noticed on this page, something other than questioning, is what a really kind elephant she is. That's pretty special, huh? So something I was wondering as I heard one thing elephants obviously eat or blackberries. I want to know what else do they eat? Because I, I really don't know. So maybe they'll tell us or maybe I could research it and find out myself. Soon after they arrived, every elephant found a special friend, another elephant that helped her feel safe. Winky and Sissy became best friends, as did Dillery and Misty. But Tara Never found a best friend. Oh, Tara. Zoom in on her a little bit. Oh, sweet thing. Then, oh, get me out of the way of the elephant. My goodness. There. Then one morning, Tara woke to find a dog named Bella sleeping next to her. When Tara got up and began to walk through the pasture, Bella rose calmly, stretched her legs, and quickly followed. Delighted, Tara reached her trunk toward Bella, chirped, then began to graze while Bella played close by in the tall grass. This was a very unusual sight. Most of the elephants didn't trust the stray dogs that lived at the sanctuary to come near them. But feisty Bella seemed to need a friend to watch over, and Tara was happy to let her. 
And so what I was wondering, I wanted to know how long has Bella lived at the sanctuary? I see that she's an older dog, but has she spent her whole life there? Or was she rescued as well? Or did she retire to the sanctuary? Like Tara. This marked the beginning of an amazing relationship. Tara and Bella began to do everything together, sharing a swim in the pond and running around playing together. That just fills my heart. Does that fill your heart? That is just like the sweetest feeling. Look at them. They're buddies. I just love that. And then over here, too, they're pals and good friends to, for each other. That is just heart filling, isn't it? When Tara's meals were delivered to her deep in the woods by a caregiver, Bella's meals were, too. On hot summer days, when the water wagon drove miles in search of thirsty elephants, woo, woo, Bella barked to have a bowl filled for her. Aw, oh, sweet, sweet things. So not only are we practicing wondering and wanting to know more, man, our heart's being worked today, too. Things that touched my heart, I'm sure things are touching your heart, too. They understood each other, and they understood each other's language. As well, when Bella jumped around and barked excitedly, Tara would gently brush her trunk across Bella's side to make sure her best friend was okay. Aw. Then Tara would chatter and trumpet in response. And something I was wondering, I can tell they spent so much time together. I was wondering, does that include at nighttime too? Or do they kind of have to go their, their separate ways at night? So I added on, did they stay together at night? Even the other elephants began to accept Bella. Since Tara wouldn't go anywhere without her, if the elephants wanted to be friends with Tara, they would have to be friends with Bella too. But one day, when the caregivers went to feed Tara, Bella was nowhere in sight. Everyone was worried. Where could she be? For a long time, Tara remained standing in the same spot. So the caregivers thought Bella must be close by. But still, they couldn't see or hear her. After a big search around the area, they finally found Bella lying in a shallow ditch, almost completely hidden by the tall grass. She was clearly hurt and could not walk. But Tara never left Bella's side the whole time they were waiting for help. There she is. Aw. Wouldn't you want a friend like that? I would too. How sweet and special. Caring. Very caring. As a caregiver, caregiver drove away with Bella, Tara did not try to stop her. She stood perfectly still and watched her friend disappear over the hill. That was probably really hard for her. But she also knew she was getting the help she needed. Bella was rushed to the animal hospital where the vet said she had a spinal cord injury. No one knew if Bella would ever walk again, but they took Bella home and made her comfortable. In the heated office above the elephant barn where they tried to nurse her back to health. Through a large window, Bella watched longingly as the elephants played outside. 
And so I stopped and paused here. And something I was wondering is what really happened to her? We know that she got hurt, but how? Was it another animal? Was it a hole? I'm not sure. So I'm wondering how Bella, how Bella got hurt. Meanwhile, for two full days, Tara remained standing at the exact spot where Bella had been found, waiting for Bella to return. When Bella didn't come back, Tara left in search of her friend. Incredibly, Tara walked straight to the elephant barn where Bella was recovering, even though she couldn't have seen that Bella was there. How'd she know that? Do you think maybe, because we, we most know that animals have senses, right? She must have sensed her and, and we smelled her. I'm not sure. That could also be a wondering for us. How'd she know? Through the window, Bella saw Tara and began to whine. She wiggled and squirmed, trying to get up and run to her friend. She even began barking excitedly, like when she and Tara played together. Then Tara started chattering back from outside. Oh, sweet things. Oh. It was clear that Tara and Bella needed to see each other. So Bella was carried downstairs to Tara. Oh, look at it. Get me out of there so you guys can see all of them. Aw, look at them. They're getting ready to be reunited. The two friends were overjoyed to be, re to be reunited. Bella stared up at Tara with her big brown eyes. And Tara gently petted Bella with the tip of her trunk. That's so, so sweet. I wish I could have seen it. But been there to see something so beautiful. Tara returned to the barn every day after that, chattering wildly until Bella was brought out to visit. Soon, Bella began to get better. When she was able to use her back legs again, Bella was allowed to roam outside with Tara during the day. And at dusk, she was brought back to the barn. And this was what I was wondering. And so I stop, pause, mark it. Okay, so, everyone, so I kind of want you to say to yourself, this is called a think mark. Okay, so we use post-its or little pieces of paper to mark our thinking. So we call this a think mark. So I was wondering this. So as a reader, I stop, I pause, I wonder, and then mark it. And I mark my thinking with a post-it. And it says, did the other elephants notice? Because we knew there were other elephants. And elephants are really smart. And I wondered, I'm wondering if they sensed her worry and if they noticed that she was always going to this one place. And did they notice that she got better? That's what I was wondering. Even though their time together was limited until Bella fully recovered, being with Tara was the best medicine for Bella. Oh, that is so sweet. Today, Bella and Tara can... Oh, jeez, there I am, right in the middle of the picture again. Bruce. Today, Bella and Tara can be found walking side by side in the woods or napping under the shade of an ancient oak tree. Bella snuggled up close to Tara. When they run, Bella limps, but it does not stop them from having fun. 
Tara and Bella are back together, sharing their meals, their freedom, and their big love. They are truly forever friends. Oh, I think that's my favorite picture. Adorable. The thing I was wondering is we noticed this story, and I'm not saying this to, to, to make any of you sad, but the story, it did talk about it, it being in 1995. And we're in 2020. And so something, so we know this book's been written quite a while ago. So I kind of want wondered if they are still alive and if they still hang together like this and could we visit them? That's what I was wondering. And then when you get a chance and if you get a chance to to read this story in one of our classrooms, there's some extra information on the elephant sanctuary, which I know you could also Google about. And there's some extra facts about elephants. And notice that some of the things that Miss Arnold modeled and wondered throughout the story were answered later in the story. But the last question I wondered was not. And even on the back of the book, on the author's page, on the details, it hasn't answered if these two are still alive and well at the sanctuary or not. And so maybe sometime we can figure that out. So boys and girls, today, this is your learning target. So your learning target as a reader is you are going to use think marks. You're going to use post-its to track a few, to track a wondering you have today. So in your 30 minutes of independent reading, self-reading time, in your book, I want you to take a post-it and I want you to write down what you were wondering and stick it on the cover if it was on the cover. Or I want you to take that post-it and stick it on the page right on that spot of where you wondered it. But most importantly, don't forget to write the actual question, the thing you were wondering. I'd like you to do one, but I know some of you are going to be so engaged in your books like I was, and you're going to wonder a lot. So you are welcome to mark your wonderings throughout your whole book, okay, throughout your whole story. On Raz Kids, on Epic. I know you can't stick it on a screen, but you could stick those post-its maybe even on a page in your reading journal. That's a creative idea. So if you don't have the book handy like I do to mark the exact page, let's find a different place to put your post-its. Okay? And I will also continue to model that in the future. Happy reading. What's your learning target? I can wonder while I read. I can ask questions while I read. How many think marks? For sure, one. Because boys and girls, you're going to have to share your one with us on Seesaw. Okay? Happy reading.